Hey everybody, Ron here. We had another D and D session today, and that was as fun as the uh, last session. Um, it was not as planned as I had the previous session, but of course, that's what I said in my previous session recap that I had no idea what, what was going to happen. So I didn't know what's going to happen, and well, we'll talk about it. The party started um, in Tarndraw. Keth went back into the inner sanctum, hid the tooth of Vavrak, turned into a rhinoceros, broke off the horn to make a fake tooth of Vavrak, placed it where the original was, turned back into a half orc, and came back out. The party discussed what to do, and Keth sent an animal messenger to contact the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers, however, were already on their way. White Wind and a bunch of gatekeepers arrived, and there was a standoff. There was some discussion, but at one point, Keth and Septimus went into the inner sanctum to talk about the tooth and the situation. Septimus summoned the Tresum servant of the Moonlit King. The Tresum doubled down on, his, on the promise of his master, the Moonlit King, to harry them until he got the tooth of Vavrak. Well, Septimus and Keth came out of the inner sanctum after that and tried to convince White Wind to help Septimus save his mother. White Wind agreed with a catch, of course, that Septimus would owe the gatekeepers a favor. Septimus was agreeable to that. This decision by White Wind is a reversal of what he told Septimus in the past. And we'll talk about that in the analysis section of the video. White Wind promised that the gatekeepers will guard Tarndral. So this whole situation put Septimus in a tough position with the Moonlit King, but now the party has a plan. They can go with the blessings of the gatekeepers and deal with their next problem, Sandthrax. But before they left, Keth takes the staff of the, uh, the Guardian of the Tomb, which turns out to be a staff of the Woodlands, and Toynga took the magic mithril half plate that one of the skeletons was wearing. Then they left Tarndral and returned to Sharn. They arrived at the party stronghold, only to find that it was assaulted by the children of Th Sandfax. It is clear now that Sandthrax sees the party as a threat to deal with. So now, it is time to deal with Sandthrax once and for all. That's what the party decided. They spent the rest of the session gathering information, prepping spells, and items to take the fight to him. Now this was a fun session, just as most of them have been. I had no idea what would happen beyond the scene with White Wind, and maybe they return to Sean. There was a lot of role playing, and that's, you know, and, and that kind of stuff's cool. There was a lot of planning, and that stuff is personally uninteresting to me as a DM, but in this case, I totally understand. After all, this is a major campaign bad guy, insane threats to Beholder, and they needed to be ready. Beholder, they all are level 9 characters, and, and a Beholder is a, is a CR 13 creature. So it's a, you know, it's a challenging encounter, potentially a deadly encounter, particularly when you add in um, minions to the to the potential fight. One of the things I wanted to make sure was that um, to involve Marv in the session. Once again, managing spotlight is a challenge, but I think it went well today. I passed on some information to Marv's player during the week. They had that key information and included it at a key point in the in the discussions, and I thought that that was great. Specifically, it was information about the type of undead that populated Tarn Draw. Since this is Eberron, Eberron has a different type of undead. It has standard undead, which is powered by necrotic energy, but they also have the Deathlands, which are powered by radiant energy. Now, typically, the Deathlands are only limited to um, Aronal and the Irini Elves, but I decided that Vavrak was an ancient creature. It was access to ancient magics, and some of that type of magic was how to make undead type creature out of radiant energy. That was my working around for the previous session because the char the players just assumed that undead equal evil, and I didn't. That's not the the vibe that I was trying to get, and so that was my way around that. And I think that worked. We'll be playing in two weeks. So I made sure that they kept notes on what they discovered about beholders and the things they were going to be going to be planning to do 
because it's easy to forget that stuff from week to week, much less two weeks. So I'm looking forward. The next challenge, of course, is sand thrax. I've just made use of the layer that's in Volo's Guide to Monsters because it's pretty good, but we'll see. I might make up something else. I need to make sure that Sandthrax and his lackeys are really interesting to fight because this is something we've been building up to for sessions upon sessions now. Um, one of the players painted a beholder. It's going to be great. Well, it, it needs to be great. I was hoping to get to this conclusion around this time, and that's what it seems, seems to be. And I'm hoping to kind of wrap it up in one session, but I'm not going to rush it. If it takes multiple sessions, that's fine too. Now looking forward to season three. I've mentioned season three before. It's the final season of the campaign. We're going to ramp up to the finale. Focus on the Lord of Blades. I've been doing some subplot stuff with Marv. I need, I really need to run a solo session with Marv so I can bring some more of that subplot stuff out so that it can become relevant in the sessions to come because there are two major NPCs, uh, antagonists, that are connected to the Lord of Blades. One of them is the assassin, Lassus Brummel. I'll put a picture up to remind you guys what, uh, he, what he looked like. Lassus actually has a connection to Marv, and I really want that to come out. And also there was Criss Cross, the Warforged assassin. I want to have both of them um, cross paths with the party here in Season 3. Before the epic fight with the, the Lord of Blades, I envision a trek into the Mornland for the party. That should be cool. And now we have the Moonlit King. The Moonlit King is not an evil Archfey. He's just an Archfey, and they and their their motives are their own. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but we're going to do something with it, and it should be interesting. That's what's come up. The players are expecting expecting that, so I want to pay that off. We'll see how that goes. I was only planning on running about another 12 to 15 game sessions to end this campaign. Um, and it, we'll wrap it up in about a year. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know how it's going to go yet, but I'm sure it'll be fun. Well, that's all I have for today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and edit this video and get it out soon, hopefully. I also have some other game stuff to prep. For example, I'm running a Prowlers and Paragons game online, and I'm looking forward to finishing up that mini campaign. I'm also going to be running a high-level weekend campaign here at the end of June. I finally decided what I was going to run. I have a basic outline of what I'm going to run. I need to uh, prep that. That's only that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So those are some things for me to look forward to. Some, D, some more D&D, &D, but high-level D&D this time, and some non-D&D stuff. So it's been a lot of fun. So that's all I got today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, I'll see you later.